G'day ladies and gents and welcome back to IL-2 Great Battles. So yesterday I did a video on the weekend IL-2 event, which I hold fairly regularly, covering IL-2 tanks. And I had a lot of questions thrown my way into regards to these tanks and in regards to the upcoming tank crew module. So today we're going to take a look at that. Now I mentioned in that video that the tanks currently available in IL-2 that can be played by anyone with any of the IL-2 modules, that is Battle of Stalingrad, Moscow and Kuban, were essentially an in-house mod created by the game's developers in their free time just to see if adding tanks to the IL-2 engine could be done. Now the tanks themselves are relatively simplistic in this test release, but it was made with no resources or backing from 777, just the free time and effort of the developers themselves. Now this proved to be so interesting to the users of IL-2 that 777 Studios, the developers of the new IL-2 Great Battle series, chose as part of their new module lineup to start development on an official module with the same level of backing as any of the other IL-2 modules, solely devoted to tanks. Now for those of you who closely follow the IL-2 dev blogs, this will not be new information. However, for those of you who haven't been, this should prove to be rather interesting. So first, let's talk location. Like the current tanks in-game, the vehicles of tank crew will be fully playable on all IL-2 maps with the tank spawn implemented. However, the current maps are designed for aircraft, and as such, they are designed to only be seen from the air at high speed, so some details are lacking, in many areas with textures that don't quite hold up to close-range inspection. But tank crew will be coming with its own map design for tanks. The map will take place in a 100 by 100 km zone around Belgorod, including an area near the town of Prokhorov, the area of the main tank battle of Kursk, and the largest tank battle in history. Now, while the 100 by 100 km map is smaller than most other current IL-2 maps, it will be in fact the smallest of them all, it has been shrunk in size to account for an increase in detail. The map will include a terrain mesh 16 times higher in detail than any current IL-2 map, along with higher resolution textures across the board to account for the much closer distances tankers will have to the environment. The texture work and detailing around the towns will also be increased to make each and every town look convincing rather than just being a set of assets dropped onto a texture like most air design maps. Adding to this will be the buildings in key town locations of famous battles and other highly important areas. These areas will be receiving newly developed building assets that are destructible can be rammed and at least theoretically could be used to hide a tank inside of to lay an ambush or just to hide from hostile close air support. It should also be added here that while 100 by 100 kilometers is smaller than the other IL-2 maps, I do believe it is still the largest tank simulator map ever created, and much like the air maps, will contain no invisible walls, so you will be able to spend hours driving from one side to the other in full if you wish. Now while this map is being designed with tanks in mind, that does not mean aircraft are excluded. Air power played a major role in the Battle of Kursk, and tank crew will be no different. Runways will be available for pilots to fly cover for their team's armor using the aircraft already available via the current IL-2 modules. And yes, this means if you are willing to spend the time, due to the lack of invisible walls, it will be possible for you to roll out of a tank base, flank around the enemy's front line, and perform an armored assault on the enemy's runways. Now again, as with all IL-2 maps, the devs have sourced as many aerial reconnaissance photographs of the area the map will be based on as possible from the time of the Battle of Kursk and have used these to work out its exact layout, topography, and even locations of farmhouses, minor roads that no longer exist, farms, and forests, and have done their best to implement them as closely as possible. So when the map is released, it will be at least for now the most detailed and realistic map of the region ever produced for a game or simulation title. So anyways, that's where we will be fighting in Tank Crew, but the next question is what will we be fighting with? Each nation will receive six vehicles in this module, five armored vehicles and one self-propelled anti-aircraft gun. For the Soviet Union, we will have the T-3476 Model 1943, the KV-1S, the M4A2 Sherman Lend-Lease, the SU-122, the SU-152, and for our anti-aircraft gun, we'll have a Gaz MM truck with a 25mm 72K anti-aircraft gun mounted on the back. For the Germans, we'll have the Panzer 3M, the Panzer 4G, the Panther D, the Tiger H1, the Ferdinand, and the half-truck SD KFZ-10, with the mounted Flak 38 on the back for air defense as well. 
The first of these vehicles have already been developed and are in testing right now, and as you can see, the attention to detail in them has been turned up to 11, in comparison to the already pretty okay tanks currently available in-game. Now, the model quality and attention to detail is not all that has changed. The tanks now have room for more crew. After all, what would a module called Tank Crew be if you couldn't actually multi-crew a tank? Now you can already multi-crew a tank now with the current IL-2 tanks, but the T-34 and the Panzer III can be manned by two people using a system that is basically a copy of the system and mechanics from the multi-crew aircraft. The pilot takes the role of the tank driver and his viewpoint, while the gunner takes the position of the gunner and what would also technically be the tank commander's hut and button view. Tank crew, however, will be expanding this. The driver's position will remain mostly the same, although it will be much more detailed with the tank being modelled with the characteristics of its real-life counterpart, so that the driver will need to learn his machine to get the best out of it. At higher realism settings, just pressing W will no longer be enough to maximise performance. The gunner will also be mostly the same, however with a more realistic point of view. Access to realistic periscopes on those tanks that had them for the gunner, and of course with optics designed to match the real-life versions used in the real tanks at the time. Also, two new positions will be available, bringing the maximum crew up to four. The first of the new positions will be the Machine Gunner Radio Operator. Now, this position will have two roles. The first is the obvious one. This player will man the machine gun positions fitted to the tank. The second role is the Radio Man. Now, exactly how this role will work is currently not known, but what is mentioned is that the tank will be able to receive and send information ranging from the current location of your own tank to the location of spotted tanks, while also receiving that same information from allied tanks and so on, allowing the tank a higher level of situational awareness. It's also been mentioned that if the radio operator in a tank is killed, the tank will lose that ability. Now we can assume that the devs are aware of Discord and that most people will be using it, so actually preventing somebody from talking to other player tanks would be impossible under normal circumstances. So it's safe to assume that this information transmitted and received will be fixed to an in-game mechanic, likely something like a location ping on the map or something along those lines. Now, reading between the lines a little bit here, it's worth noting that the Radio Man's first job also gives us some idea on how this system will work. Machine guns are not overly effective against tanks, but they are against infantry. Now, while I don't expect we will see player-controlled infantry in an IL-2 game, there are already AI infantry available, and infantry is a major part in tank combat. I expect that this AI will be cleaned up and improved for tank crew, meaning that you will likely not only have to defend yourself against other tanks, but potentially against manned portable anti-tank weapons. But on top of that, you are likely also going to be sending and receiving information from AI-based infantry and spotters in your area. But we'll know more about this as development progresses and more information is released. So moving on, the second of the new roles that will be available is that of the Tank Commander. Again, the exact mechanics of this role are not currently released, however it has been mentioned that the Commander will be unable to directly control the systems of the tank, but will be able to issue orders to the crew and feed them information. It's also been mentioned that at expert realism settings, the Tank Commander will be restricted only to realistic field of view. So a clear view from the cupola when unbuttoned, but a view from the periscopes inside the cupola when the tank is sealed up for combat. Now the loader will also be modelled, however that role will be limited to AI only. Now manning all of these stations with players of course won't be required. Should a player choose to man a tank solo, it will be possible for them to man all the stations at the same time alone, in much the same way that a pilot can man all the stations of their aircraft solo, should they wish to. But what this information that's been released does also tell us is that at the highest difficulty levels, Tank combat will carry the same limitations as real-life tanks in terms of situational awareness, meaning in multiplayer on max settings, we are looking at 100 plus player supported realistic simulations with multi-crew tanks and aircraft supported by AI infantry limited to their real-world visual limitations and radio simulations on a 100 by 100 size battlefield with no invisible walls to limit tactics. I'll let you take that in for a moment. So, when does all this tanky goodness become available? Well, the module itself isn't due for release until next year, however, we have a possible early access period that will likely include the Tiger and the KV-1 you have seen here as soon as this month. No exact date on that of course, but it means we could be seeing the first examples of this new level of IL-2 simulation at pretty much any time. Although there were some caveats mentioned with this potential early access release. 
For a start, the 3D models themselves of the tanks are most likely to be complete. However, it is possible that the physics models will not be 100% finished during early access. The 50mm, 76mm and 88mm guns along with all of their associated shells are likely to be finished with all of the detailed ballistic properties in place. And all four of the stations including the two new stations should also be complete within the tanks during early access. However, it's likely that the mechanics for the commander's position will not be complete at the time and will be non-functional and it's possible the radio stations will not be complete as well. So essentially you will be able to sit in the positions, but they either won't be working or may only have partial functionality available to the occupants of the seats at the time. Regardless, I can say that I'm going to have an absolutely fantastic time playing around with the tanks even in early access, and I can say that because I've already used the tanks that are currently in game, and these are going to be modelled a hell of a lot better and I have fun with the ones we've already got. And you can be sure that as soon as Tank Crew is available, I will be on that and there will be videos up on the channel demonstrating both of the new tanks. Anyways, ladies and gents, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found it informative and thank you very much for watching. As always, check the video description down below for links to my social media, to my Twitch and to my Patreon if you would like to help directly support the channel. And of course, as always, remember to click that like button, share and subscribe if you would like to see more and until next time, Take care.